cars are one of the things that the world cannot live without. They exist in every corner around the world, and it doesn't even matter whether it's a big city or a small village. They've become a necessity of modern society. And it's hard to think about how life would be without transportation. There are a lot of cars out there, and they come in a stunning variety. I mean, a lot of cars focus more on functionality and sacrifice the beauty of the car. But today's cars are becoming more and more stunning every single day. When we think of cars, we think of two types. You've got regular cars and then you've got sports cars, which are on a whole other level. And if you love cars like I do, you're definitely gonna enjoy the super interesting story behind the car manufacturer Ferrari. But let's be honest, you don't have to be a sports car maniac to appreciate the fascinating story. So we'd really appreciate it if you like, subscribe to help us with the YouTube algorithm. Now with that out of the way, we can move on with the story behind Ferrari. It's weird to think that cars are a relatively new invention when it comes to human history. And even during the early years of the 20th century, cars were still an emerging invention. You had cars circulating in urban areas, where you had more factories and people working. And as we know, Ford was also kicking off at that time. So you had a lot of people buying cars. But outside big cities, cars were still a rare sight, as good infrastructure and paved roads were a necessity if you want to keep your car in good shape. Northern Italy was no exception to this. In the earliest days, the Italian automobile industry was made up almost entirely of small local manufacturers. Most automotive hubs in the country were in fact just the workshops of local engineers. Alfredo Ferrari ran one of these workshops in the outskirts of Modena, a city in the northern region of Italy. Alfredo worked mainly as a metal worker, but he also repaired cars in his workshop, and since he owned one, he knew how it worked. Alfredo would often get his young son Enzo to help him out in his workshop, and in return, he would teach Enzo how to drive. This was a big part of Enzo's childhood, and his ambition was to become a race car driver one day. But before he was old enough to even try to pursue it, World War I came along. His early life wasn't easy to say the least. His father and bigger brother were drafted into the Italian army, and both of them died in 1916, when the influenza epidemic broke out, and ultimately, family business died along with them. And keep in mind, Enzo was 18 at this point. Just one year later, Enzo was drafted as a military blacksmith, but he was in bad shape, and due to his health condition, he was discharged in 1918. And so with a dead father and big brother, and also unemployed, Enzo found a job driving ex-military refurbished chassis between Turin and Milan for an engineer that was rebodying them for the civilian market. While working there, Enzo met a lot of engineers and former race car drivers. And so, his ambition of becoming a racer resurfaced again. They eventually gave him the opportunity to pursue his dream of becoming a race car driver himself. Enzo's first race was a hill climb race on October 5, 1919, where he managed to place fourth. In 1920, he went to drive for Alfa Romeo, and in 1923, he managed to win a race in Ravenna, which was one of the most competitive tracks in Italy at the time. Enzo's victory was a huge surprise, and it surprised Count Enrico Barraca, who was one of the patrons. He was so impressed with Enzo's performance that he invited him over to his mansion. And by coincidence, or maybe not, Italy's top scoring fighter from World War I was Francesco Barraca, the Count's son who died during the war. Francesco is credited with 34 aerial victories, the highest among all Italian pilots of the war. This is one of the key moments that shaped the Ferrari logo. Francesco's plane was decorated with the Cavallino Rampante, the black horse that we know and love. Francesco's mother dedicated her son's emblem to Enzo, after she was impressed by Enzo's racing skills. Enzo ended up winning a dozen races during his career, and in 1929, he formed his own team. The team served as Alfa Romeo's racing team for 10 years, and for the team emblem, he chose the Cavallino Rampante, a black horse with a yellow background, which is the color of Modena. Alfa Romeo disbanded the team in 1938 in order to build their own team. At first, Enzo remained as the manager of the new team. But one year later, he left Alfa Romeo in order to form his own company. In 1940, Enzo designed a car of his own, the AAC 815. In just under four months, Enzo designed and built two of these cars. Only one of them still exists today. One of them was scrapped and the other one is now a part of the Regini collection, which is one of Italy's finest private car collection. Enzo's factory got bombed during the Second World War, but fortunately, he had it back up and running by 1946. One year later, 
Enzo unveiled the Ferrari 125S, which was the first car to race under the name Ferrari. This car used a V-shaped engine with six cylinders on each side, unlike the 815, which used the eight-cylinder engine. The V12 has remained Ferrari's go-to engine for most of the models built since World War II. In 1948, Enzo released the Ferrari 166, which was the successor for the 125S, and it became the company's first big international hit. In 1957, they released the Ferrari 250 Testarossa, which continued the company's victory spree as it secured three World Sports Car Championships. Towards the end of the 60s, demands for Ferrari cars were becoming so large that Enzo couldn't keep up, and so the pressure forced Enzo to sell 50% of the company to Fiat, which was the largest company back then in Italy. During the 1970s, Ferrari won three driver championships, and they couldn't win anymore for 20 years. Unfortunately, Enzo passed away in 1988, but despite his death, the 1990s turned out to be a revival period for Ferrari's racing team. In 1993, Ferrari hired a new general manager, who would eventually become the CEO of Ferrari, and also the president of the International Automobile Federation. Under his guidance, Ferrari acquired Michael Schumacher in 1996. Now at the time, Ferrari's Formula 1 team was in horrible shape, and they hadn't won a single driver championship since 1979. In the year 2000, Michael Schumacher would later win Ferrari's first driver championship in 20 years. He then won again four more times in a row, becoming the most decorated Formula 1 driver in history. Ferrari would later release more car models, one of them in 2013 with the stunning price tag of $1.4 million. Only 499 of these have been built so far. And of course, we cannot finish the video without talking about the new 2021 Ferrari Roma. It is by far the cheapest model so far, at the modest price of only $250,000. So that was it for today's video, Ferrari is definitely not your typical company. We of course didn't mention all the major events in Ferrari's history, but we included what we thought were the most memorable moments of all. Thank you for watching this video, make sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell for more videos in the future.